kamusta kayong lahat? Welcome to Pinoy Bounce. Hope you guys are all doing amazing. I'm your host for tonight, Marky Mark. And over here on my left side, we got my homegirl, Ingrid. How are you feeling? Good. Great. Awesome. Over here on my right side, we got my homeboy, Dan Moose. How are you feeling as a special guest? Super excited to be here, guys. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Let's go straight to our topics because we got a lot to talk about. The trade deadline just passed today. What are your thoughts about the trades? What were your favorite of that trade? And what does it do for the NBA this season? I have to say the most one that, the one that stood out to me the most is probably with Clint Capella. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like the Rockets kind of messed up with that one. Yeah. And they're just putting PG Tucker as their center. Yeah. So I just feel like they just totally lost a, a viable asset for, you know, for someone that's a good like rim protector and everything too. So. Do you think they're doing something here that's kind of warrior-esque? The way they did with um, Durant as their five, and then no, Draymond as their five, and then Durant as their four, or uh, just crazy. <laughs> I think they're taking a huge risk, especially uh, going this far with Capella in their system, and now they, like, you know, just going three sixty. So, yeah. When it comes to postseason, like they're absolutely screwed for it. Mm -hmm. So I just can't see the effect of small ball, uh, like that, taking that risk of playing small ball during that time. Mm -hmm. What about the other trades? Like, uh, well, one that I just saw was the uh, the Wiggins for uh, mm. D'Angelo Russell. Yeah. So um, I don't know where I stand with that one as well, but I think um, for Golden State, I think it benefits them more in my opinion, just because bringing Wiggins into that system and um, kind of reminds me of when they used to have Harrison Barnes mm -hmm. in that Golden State era. So it's it's interesting to see what happened with him and um, on the other end with um, D'Lo and uh, T Wolves, right? So I mean. Like with uh, Wiggins, he's going to be their top shooter there for for Golden oh. State. So that's kind of that sounds a little bit sad. <laughs> At the same he's the time. top player right now. Yeah, until, but just imagine. Yeah. So you get Wiggins into the system. Next, you know, Clay will come back. Uh, Curry will come back. You know, got Dream on, and then I, f I don't even know who else is on your team there. But just you got yeah. those like. Well, player, you're gonna yeah. get a good draft pick, pick this season. as well. So, yeah, that's, so gonna that's be, secured. Uh, that's true. Yeah. And, and it, it's a benefit trade for both anyway. We, we all knew that D'Angelo wasn't going to last that long in Golden, in Golden State. State. Just yeah. It was a good move, Golden State, to what they did instead of losing Durant for nothing. They got, you got a really viable trade piece like D'Angelo Russell. And they used it to, to kind of turn it into you know, a, a formidable player that can score, athletic wing. And I think um, Wiggins has just had this really bad rep with, with Minnesota. And in this kind of fresh start, to be in a culture like um, to be in a culture like Golden State, I think it's gonna really gonna help uh, his potential to reach his potential because everybody think he still has it, and the motor is just not there. But I feel like it's the environment too. Uh, to someone like Wiggins who's not the kind of person that would assert himself, but if you're put in a system where you have natural born leaders like Draymond and Curry, they have a different way of leading as opposed to players like Jimmy Butler or Cat. It's very different in the way they led, and I think. It's gonna make the most out of his talent. Speaking of which, um, the Heat. Oh. That's um, now that they have Iggy, and they also now have. There's a Jay Crowder. Yeah, Jay Crowder. Jay Crowder yeah. um, they were trying to get Danilo too, but I mean, <laughs> to get someone of that experience like Iguodala, like what does that say with the Heat right now? What did they put? What did they stand in the East? So I feel like obviously they're they're a top team and everything. I just feel like. Before, when they didn't have a vet player with that kind of postseason playoff experience, like Iggy, I feel like they wouldn't be ready for it. Now that they have these certain like small miss missing pieces, they can be able to to paint the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of scary and a little bit threatening the way I see it. So I, I know Raptors will still be able to beat them. Mm -hmm. So uh, I just feel like it's just now more of a threat in the East. I I actually think like with Miami and also with the trade that happened with the Sixers, like they actually put themselves in a really good with position Berks right and, now. With and Glenn Robinson. Add, yeah. yeah, I mean, Simmons, they kind of playing off of Simmons' strength and, and Embiid's strength to really command that double team and to really have, uh, to collapse the defense in the paint. To have players like Alec Burst to kind of help with the playmaking and then kind of like Glenn Robinson the third who can shoot. Who can come off from the bench too. Mm -hmm. These are solid, off the bench players, kind of thing, so they can be able to put that key supportive role mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. for the Sixers. And yeah, it's in the mix right now. Like I can't even predict who's going to come out of the East because you have Bucks, the Raptors, Boston is still there, 
and then you add in Sixers and you add in um, Miami Heat. That's five pretty decent teams that's kind of in the same level. As terms of I think my only concern is that what will Brett Brown do <laughs> with his coaching abilities? Yeah. How will he be able to utilize, you know, these two, you know, solid player like solid bench players with with like with Embiid and with, you know, with uh, Ben Simmons, so that's probably one of my biggest concerns. Did we look into Drummond <laughs> going to Cleveland? <laughs> well, okay, let's all. Do you guys all agree of how I don't know if was that even a, a trade or was that just giving a player just for fun? Like, it's just giving a player. Who are those two players? That's what, I've that's never what, that's like. What, what are they? Who yeah. are they? Like, what do you guys think was Cavs' plan on this? Like, I try. I can't really. Besides, just give them away. Like, they're gonna like drop them. Yeah. Like, wave like them what off was or Detroit? I don't what know. was Detroit like? What, what is in their books? Like, do they have any kind of mastermind plan that you guys think? It's just come? brought back flashbacks to like when Toronto got rid of Carter. Okay. And and I was just we got like, what's the GM thinking, right? But yeah. well, what's yeah now? <laughs> who's Derrick Rose going to now play with? Yeah. Who's there but that's going to support him? I guess they're they're trying to tank, but at the same time, like, I think they all know that Drummond wasn't gonna, was going to walk away this season after free agency. So to get. Something at least is a good thing, but then to get literally <laughs> nothing. But that also speaks maybe because they are, I think they did try to, to find a suitable um, trade for Drummond. And I think that goes to show that there was not, it's not that big of a market for a big man. No, it just because, sucks though because yeah. he went from like somewhat of a decent team to a very terrible team. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, it, yeah. It's just like it goes to show now, now the value of big man is in the league. Like to get someone like Drummond, Nobody was willing to get more than like what Cleveland gave because I don't. I think that they could have at least beat decent players that they got, but I think there just wasn't. A, there's no market anymore for big guys. Well, think about it. Like his mid range isn't that good. Mm -hmm. You know, he's not a very sharp shooter. He's yeah. a, like he is a solid rim protector. Yeah. He's got the rebounds and everything. He can get up, post up, but at the same time, it's just like that's not what basketball is that's in this in this generation, yeah. right? Yeah. So yeah. it goes to show like a person of that talent is not even as valuable. So. No, I just feel like with the whole trade that was going on, it's just like you're trading a rare Pokemon card for like what a healing spray and a common <laughs> and a common thing. That's that's just the way I'm seeing it, I right? Know, I so with you. I agree with you. Well, that's all we have, guys, for what's up in the NBA. But stay tuned because when we come back, all about the Raptors.